Now, what's a good dosage? I would say for a kiddo, probably 500 milligrams is a good dosage for the day. I would say an adult, I would say one to two. So now I say 500 milligrams and I'd say one to 2000 milligrams for an adult upwards, potentially to three or four, depending if you have an active upper respiratory issue with mucus and you'd want to take that two to three times during the day. Again, one of the big side effects that you know if you have a problem with NAC is you start getting drier mucous membranes, drier eyes, drier sinuses, drier mucous membranes, drier mouth. So if you start to taper up with the NAC, you may notice that as a problem as you go up. And if you do, just back off the dose, no big deal. And if you're taking it like one to two times during the day, you may be better off taking it three to four times and not take it as much at once to kind of trigger that drier mucous membrane kind of effects. There are other herbs that are great mucolytics too, like the guaiac bark, guaiac, what you may see in like uh, mucinex or some of those over-the-counter products. Again, mucinex is going to have lots of dyes and preservatives and colors and maybe even gluten. So I like taking the guaiac bark by itself. But NAC is my first line of defense because the thing I love about NAC is it gives your body the building blocks to make glutathione. So if you take glutathione in, whether it's in a reduced form, a liposomal form, or an acetyl form, that glutathione is going to go where it's going to go. So the body doesn't quite have the ability to make it and disperse it where it needs. So you don't quite have that local transportation effect of that glutathione. So the benefit of NAC is you are endogenously going to be able to make it better and disperse it better than just giving it in, right? Giving it. It's like if I just inject something to your body, right? You're, it's going to work locally first, like a steroid or antibiotic. The benefit of the NAC is your body can use that raw material, disperse it, and then convert it locally and get it out to where it needs better. So you give your body better control when the NAC building blocks are there. That's why I love it. It's super cost effective. And I love to add it in when anyone's sick. It's an important part of my antiviral immune protocol because it's going to decrease the upper respiratory issues. Most people that end up being older and that get a pneumonia, that could be the last infection they get that could take them to their grave. And so if you can decrease the chance of that mucus and that lower oxygenation and that secondary potential bacterial pneumonia, you really give that person a great opportunity to survive that infection. And so I love it for all those purposes. Side benefits, lots of studies on NAC and glutamate in the brain. Glutamate is going to happen when there's inflammation in the brain. Glutamate is connected to all kinds of things, memory issues, mood issues, OCD, trichotillomania, like pulling your hair out, those kind of OCD type of issues. And again, glutamate can rise with MSG, monosodium glutamate. It can rise from excitotoxins like aspartame, right? And so one, avoid those foods, number one, but you can use NAC to decrease the glutamate in the brain from inflammatory foods. That glutamate could be there from gluten. It could be there from some of those toxins I mentioned. But the benefit is if you can reduce those things and use NAC at that you know, one to two gram level, some of the studies, some of the studies that don't show benefits, in my opinion, they do too low of a dose. And also you can't just do NAC and then add in the MSG and all the other crap in your environment because that's not fixing the underlying issue. It's like you're, you're lighting a fire in the house while you're putting it out and you continue to light it. You have to stop lighting the fire, stop adding inflammation to your inflammation bucket, and then you can have a better effect using supplements to calm down the brain.